I'm Allie Beckman with the Potomac Bead Company, and I get the chance today to play around with the new Zoli Duo bead, which is a fun uh, bead out of the Czech Republic. It's Czech glass, and they come in both the right and the left side. So they look like little um, commas or little paisleys here, and you're going to have right and left. You can see the difference here in a left bead versus a right bead. The right bead is going to turn to the right, the left bead is going to turn to the left. If you need any of these Zoli Duos in order to do the pendant that we'll be doing here, the Zoli Duo fan, you can go to the bottom of the video and get a link to shop with me at potomacbeads.com where the date is that the video was produced and the information about the video. Just press the down arrow there and it will give you links to all of these different products online. You can also look in the top right hand corner and that little I which would be information from us, the video creator, and that's information for you guys um, like some of the product numbers and links to the products as well. So this is going to be a very simple technique which is kind of the most simple way you can use the Zoli Duo. And it's not going to matter for the design if you use right or left. I have left that I used here with this um, sample piece. And I'm going to use right now just to show you guys the difference. And like I said, it's not going to matter for this design if you use right or left. We're just using one of the styles and we're using all the left or the right bead. There'll be some other videos that are created using both left and right beads. Again, for this one, it doesn't really matter. For the pendant, you're gonna be using 14 of the Zoli Duo beads. And in addition to that, I have some four millimeter Potomac round crystals. Here I have the champagne color, and I'm gonna be using the bronze color for the design. We're gonna be using seven of the crystals for the outer edge. And then if you wanna do one coming off of the bale, you can do that as well, so seven or eight. I'm gonna increase the size of the pendant a tiny bit by using some O beads in addition to the 15 O's that are on the sides of the crystal. For the O beads, we're gonna be using crystal Aztec gold. And for the 15s, which just go on the sides here, I'm going to be using that dye transparent fuchsia in the Miyuki brand of 15.0. So just a nice bright pink is going to really make this pop for this just jet sunset color and really make that pink pop out. So again, you're going to need about 14, or you can make it bigger, but I'm going to use 14 of the Zoli Duos, either the right or the left. We're going to use seven of the crystals. We're going to be using 14 of our OB and then a couple of the 15 O's for the inner and the outer section of that. The whole thing I'm going to string with 0 .006 wildfire beading thread in the green color and we're going to use about three feet of beading thread. In addition to that, I have a size 10 needle here. You can use 10, 11, or 12 for the design. That is up to you. And then if you want to, you can also have some extra beads, the crystals, the O beads, and the 15 O's to do an actual chain to put the pendant on. In addition to those, I have a needle nose plier sitting here to flatten out the end of my thread because I like to use a thread burner or a thread zap. This is the thread zap too. I like to use it to get the actual thread off the spool as well as burn down the end of the thread when I finish up my project. So the thread zap two, the thread zap ultra, uh, the cord cutter, any of those will do the same thing. So you're gonna wanna have one of those handy. And then I'm working on a nice workable surface. So you want a nice surface in order to have your design and to make it more efficient for you to bead and kind of pick them up. When I go ahead and I create, I usually use my bead on it board, which I have the collection of kind of things on, and then I move it from one room to the other. And then I have my surface here that I do for a video. So I do that nice white background for you guys. To get started, we're going to take our three feet of thread and put it onto our needle. So I'm gonna burn the three feet of thread off the wildfire cord here. Pulling, when you get these, keep that plastic coating there. That goes on and off as you take your thread on and off. Pull your spool out to get your three feet. Put the end back on. And then you're gonna grab your cord cutter or threads up and burn through. From here, this is where I do that little trick where you're gonna take your pliers and kind of flatten out the end of that thread, which is gonna fan it out a little bit. And that's gonna make it much easier for you to take your needle and actually thread the needle of the project. You can also take that pliers if you want to pull the thread 
through the needle. To get started, we have our Zoli Duos here. And in the original design, I did not put the 15 O's between the middle. For this design, I want a little bit more of that pink to pop. So I'm gonna be adding the 15 O's in the middle of the design as well. This is gonna be two layers of the Zoli Duo, and we're gonna do seven in the middle and seven on the outer edge. The Zoli Duos have two holes. They have a hole at the top of the little apostrophe and at the bottom of the apostrophe. Again, I'm going to be stringing through the bottom hole, all going in the same direction. I have my thread and my needle on, and I'm just gonna hold the end of the thread. Line up your Zoli Duos so that you have seven all in a line facing the same direction. That's gonna make it easier for you to pick up with your needle then and make sure that you have them lined up exactly the way that you want them to be. From there, pick up a 15-0 seed bead and we're gonna string through the bottom hole of the Zoli Duos or the small hole of the Zoli Duos, which is gonna be right there at the tip. You wanna make sure that you're stringing them all in the same direction so that way you don't see any of the back of the Zoli Duos. You want them all to be forward facing. They're bubbled up on one side and they're flat on the other side. So you wanna make sure that you're picking them up through the small hole at the top and pick up all seven. As I pick up all seven, I'm going to make sure that I put a 15-0 between each of my beads. They're just kind of hanging out on my needle right now. There I have six on. I'll get one more on my needle and thread. And we started with a 15-0, so I'm gonna end with the Zoli Duo. Let that all drop down to the bottom of the thread till you have about two inches of thread left. I'm gonna tie this in a knot, right over left and then left over right. If you want to have some super new glue handy, you can have some super glue as well. That's up to you. And that super glue will allow you then to glue the knot. You wanna to wait to do that and not do it right away because you don't wanna by accident glue any of the holes shut and then have to come back. You can see this creates that nice kind of centralized look of the Zoli Duo. You can also see now the difference of the left versus the right, that the bigger end is gonna to go towards the right or in the case of the left beads, towards the left. From this point, we'll go from the inner hole to the outer hole of the Zoli Duos, and we'll add seven more of our Zoli Duos. With this coating, I wanna make sure that I pick out the ones that have more of the pink color to them. Some of them have more of an orangish or a green. So I wanna pick out um, all of my ones that have more of a pink color, and then I'll use the green color to make another pendant that looks kind of completely different. So I'm gonna make sure that I have seven more available to use. And anytime you're using something with multiple, multiple holes, you wanna make sure that two of the holes um, that both holes, excuse me, go the whole way through on the design. So that I have seven more beads out. I'll put the rest of my Zoli Duos away and we'll get ready to progress from the inner hole to the outer hole of the Zoli Duos, adding in our next little apostrophe row. So to start the second row of the pendant here, we are going to take our thread and needle and go through that first 15-0 as well as the first hole of the first Zoli Duo that we put on. From there, we're gonna go from the outer, or from the inner hole rather, to the outer hole of that same Zoli Duo. What that's gonna do is put a little bit of thread on the outside of the Zoli Duo, which is gonna be on the actual kind of inside of the little comma there. And because of the way that the pendant is, you won't see that green thread showing. From here, we get to do our next row of our Zoli Duo beads. For the next row, we're going to put them in so that way the comma pretty much fits on the interior, going through from the outside or the second hole of the first Zoli Duo into what we're calling the first hole of the new Zoli Duo. So we're gonna add another Zoli Duo and we're gonna sew through the second hole of the 
Zoli Duo from the previous row. That's going to pull that little comma right in there tight. Again, add another one. And if you need to, you can kind of line them up so they're facing the correct direction. But again, we want to go through so that way the comma part, we're going through the skinny end, the black side is going to be down and the coating side is going to be up. Pulling the bead in then, we're adding one and sewing through the next. I'm going to make sure also that the thread doesn't get twisted anywhere. And then we add this kind of little flare of our second one. So I'm going to keep going around adding in my next of my Zoli Duos. And the nice thing about the Zoli Duo I forgot to mention at the start, the size actually is 5 by 8 millimeter. Because of that, they're going to work up really quickly because they're bigger than most of our other two hole beads. Going through then, I have one more to add. And I'm adding my little comma, my little Zoli Duo. and then stringing through the next. So at this point, I'm adding the last one in. I'm gonna string through the second hole, as well as the first hole of the first Zoli Duo that I put on in row two. Laying it down then, you can see kind of that fun flare. And here's the difference of adding in a 15-0 in the middle versus keeping that 15-0 out. And it's just a tiny little bit of a spacing but it does make a difference in the size. Like we did going from the interior hole of the one Zola Duo to the exterior hole on row one, we're gonna do the same thing on row two, going from the interior to the exterior of that hole. Here on the outside then, I'm gonna get out my O beads as well as my four millimeter rounds. I already have my 15 O's out and they're gonna be ready to be picked up. So from here, I'm gonna add a 15, an O bead, my round bead, an O bead, and then another 15. So that's gonna be the, the actual pattern is 15 O round O 15. You're gonna go from the second hole of the Zoli Duo of one to the other, going around and adding in this little collection of the crystal as well as the 15s and the O beads. We're gonna spin around here then, adding that design in, and that's gonna then create kind of the outer edge of the pendant. It's also gonna take our Zoli Duo and use the entire hole. I kind of have a pet peeve of using multi-hole beads and only using one hole and this is going to fill in and create a little bit of a loop in that pendant. On the one previous, because I didn't put a 15 O before the actual Zoli Duos as I was adding them on row one, all I have there is the 15 O as well as the crystal. I thought the O beads would add to the look. O beads are one of my favorite check glass beads that really can add a lot with quite a little bead. And I'm gonna spin the whole way around now, adding in that O bead next to the crystal with the 15 O on either side. So go ahead around. And again, it doesn't matter if you're going left or right, it's gonna be the same as you go around and add your pendant in. If you want to, you can also do a reverse pattern where you have the O bead on first and then the 15 and then the crystal. So that's kind of up to you what pattern you wanna do it in. If you put the O bead first, the pink will stick out a little bit more. So that's an option for you. And I'm gonna continue around here with the design, adding in two more of that pattern of the 15 O crystal. You can also play around with the spacing. A six millimeter bead will basically be the same as this spacing here with the 15s and the O beads. So if you want to, you could switch out for a six millimeter bead. As you come around then and add in the final of your crystal beads, I'm gonna sew through adding in the final bead and sew through the crystal 
the Zoli Duo and the beads that I did on round number one or on the first actual rotation. Move that stop bead out of the way or that stop thread or that starter thread out of the way. From here I'm coming out of one of my crystals and that's going to be the actual start of where I do the bale. So the bale itself I'm going to add on four of my 15 O's and then I'm going to do one of my O beads, one of my crystals, and then more 15 O's. That's going to sit right above and create my bale. So from here, we're going to actually create a V right above the rest of the Zoli Duo and the pendant. We're going to finish our bale and then our pendant will be complete. After my crystal bead there, I'm going to put on 20 of the 15 O's. So we have 20 15 O's that I put on my needle um, and had those right after the crystal. From there, I'm going to go back through the crystal as well as the O bead and bring my needle out. What that's going to do then is create a loop with those 15 O's that is going to work as my bail. From here, I'm going to add four more 15's and I'm going to string through that crystal that my thread is currently coming out of. I'm going to string through in the opposite direction so that way the bail is going to sit directly over that last crystal bead. From here, again, I'm going to reinforce going through all of those same beads which is going to reinforce my entire bail loop. So we're going to go back through here and so back through all of the beads that I just added. I'm doing this because you want to make sure that you have a nice secure method with two threads through the end to make sure that you have a good amount of thread through the area which is going to have tension which that's going to sit there on its side. If you want you can make the bale smaller too and just do a loop directly after the bead that's kind of up to you. I have it so that it's going to drop down a fair amount. You can also decorate the outer edge with the seed beads if you want to kind of bring more of that pink color into it. To do so you're just going to go through the seed beads come out the 15 now on the side of the Zoli Duo, so going through the Aztec bead and the 15 now. That's going to bring that bail right in there. Move that starter thread out of the way. And then we're going to add in five of our 15s. So at this point you can be finished if you want and tie off the thread or you can add those five 15s on, go through the 15 O bead, crystal, O bead, 15, and decorate the outer edge of the Zoli Duos with our pink beads. I like that this pendant is bright and cheerful as we get into summer. So I'm going to go ahead and put those five 15 O's around the outer edge of the Zoli Duo. So again, you're sewing back through the crystals and the O beads and the 15 O's that you just added. And coming out before the Zoli Duo, you're going to add in your five new 15 O beads that you're going to stick on your needle. And those are going to just frame the outer edge. It also makes it a little bit more of a substantial pendant and reinforces that outer edge as well. I have the 15 O's kind of all over my mat, so this also gives me an opportunity to clean up my beading mat too. So you can see how you can keep the pendant very simple, or you can increase the size of the pendant and the design as well by adding in some more 15 O's. I'm going to go around the outer edge of the pendant here, adding in those five 15 O's above the last Zoli Duo, and come back to the top and tie off my thread. As you come back around then, you can tie off your thread in between beads. I brought my thread back between my crystal and my O bead, tied it off just with a simple sewer's knot. Then I'm going to go in with my thread burner, burn the thread down, and then burn that end of my thread down as well, right in between the beads so that you can't see it. Again, going back to the starter thread, I'll also burn that down as well, burning that down, and then burning down that starter thread. 
I'm going to burn it down far enough that you can't see it at all and that it is nice and tucked in the project. One thing that you can do is actually make this a component project where you're linking in the different Zola duos and kind of making it a pattern. I'll do another video where I show how to do that, but all you would do is create another component and simply link into the same crystal. So that's an idea if you want to do this as a component piece. You can go in and create as many components as you like and kind of graduate them going back towards the finishing mark. It would look really neat, and I challenge you guys to play around with the Zolo Duos. The nice thing is they're a larger bead and they're not too expensive, so you can really kind of play around and have fun with them. Play around with that right and left concept, or just go along with one right shape or a left shape. Again, if you need any of the materials to do this pendant, you can go back to the beginning of the video where I list them off, or below the video to the little date stamp of the actual video creation and link to all of the different beads there that you can purchase from me at potomacbeads.com if you would like to do so. You can also stay connected with me and with Potomac Beads by subscribing to this YouTube channel. There you get regular updates on different designs that we do, whether or not it's wire working designs or seed beading designs or just general updates as far as what's going on in the beading world. You can also stay connected with me on Facebook and Instagram, as well as, again, go to potomacbeads.com. On Facebook, you can also join our group for beading and jewelry making. Ask to become a member there and you get your hands on a wonderful resource of people that love to make jewelry that are super helpful, giving suggestions, ideas, showing off their creations and really giving inspiration. As always, everyone, thank you so much for watching and have fun if you get your hands on some of these fun new Zoli Duo beads. Enjoy and have fun. Thanks, everybody.